So we are live. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, yes. So it's uh, one more minute to 8 p.m. So yes, get on to Facebook and join us. Tonight we have a very special speaker with us. You're right. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us live right here in FB. And I am your host and moderator this evening. I'm Elizabeth Ho. Founder and CEO of Elizabeth Image Branding, a certified image consultant. So tonight I have another fellow image consultant with me. <laughs> um, I'm also a transformational coach helping men and women to discover their true authentic self and empowering them to communicate that authenticity through their appearance and presence with power and influence. So tonight is our first session actually uh, of this Dare to Bear series, a series uh, uh, you know, a uh, one-hour interview with uh, guest speakers, both from locally and internationally. And I am super honored tonight to have a very, very special guest speaker, um, a fellow colleague in the image conduct, uh, consulting industry, a very much sought-after speaker, uh, Miss Sherry Brandel, to launch this series for us. So let us give uh, our Malaysian welcome to Sherry. All right. So yeah, you you uh, use the chat, you use the chat, and then you type. Can you please type the symbol at? Just type the symbol at uh, as a you know clapping uh, a loud applause, for Sherry, because we can't hear you, we can't see you, but we can we can see what you type. All right. So Sherry is the president of. Fashion meets faith. She's an author of Help Me Jesus, I Have Nothing to Wear. And she's the founder and the president of Fashion Meets Faith. Mm -hmm. She's also a very um, speaker. She inspired thousands of women each year to new levels of confidence at conferences around the globe. And I, I see that, you know, Sherry, you travel all across America to give uh, Christian conferences. I wish one day I can join you in America. And uh, through her YouTube, yes, your YouTube channel is amazing, right? <laughs> all right I need to learn that, all right? And, um, and really, she, she, she's one role model that even for myself as an image consultant, I, I, I have so much to learn from her, from the aspect of uh, fashion uh, and how to look good and in line with how God sees us. So Sherry, thank you for joining us. Do you want to um, share a little bit about yourself? I know that this is very early for you, 8 a.m. in the morning at North Carolina. Yeah, so um, welcome, Sherry. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow, thank you. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful introduction. I'm not sure I can you know, stand up to that, but thank you, Elizabeth. And I know it has been years in the making of you and I doing something together. And <laughs> this coronavirus to make this happen. So I'm honored. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I'm honored. I've been in the image industry for, oh my goodness, over yeah, 35 years. So a long, long time, long, long time. And I think we'll probably get into that in just a little bit, but I'm married. I have four adult children um, and they're all, they're all married. I'm a grandmother of two little ones. And so just, just a busy, beautiful life that the Lord has, you know, it's not always been busy and beautiful. It's always been busy, not always beautiful, but <laughs> the Lord has a way of working all that out. So yes. I'm just so, grateful to be here. Sure. How, how is the condition right now in North Carolina, in, you know, uh, with this uh, COVID-19 crisis? We are still shelter at home, but we have just opened up phase one, which means that some stores can open, restaurants can be open, but only at 25%. And my husband is in the high risk category. So I don't really go anywhere. I've kind of been at home, well, for about seven, eight weeks now. And so all of my speaking engagements were canceled or moved to the fall. And um, I'm very grateful that much of my business is done online. And so we, I really, we haven't skipped much of a beat. We're just kind of, you know, I'm doing more of these kind of, kind of you know, interviews. But yes. <laughs> yeah, but good, good. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you see your 
husband in the high risk category. What, what do you mean? Well, he he's over 65, so he's 66, and he has a degenerative spine condition, and so he has lung issues and just all kinds of things with his body. So he, if he got it, he probably would get it very badly. So I have to be careful of where I go so I don't bring it to him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we will remember your hobby in prayer. Right. So um all right, let us see. <clears throat> I, I actually know Sherry some years back and uh, at that time we were discussing of you know actually uh planning to fly Sherry over to Malaysia to have a, a woman conference, a Christian woman conference over in Malaysia and Singapore. But somehow, as we mentioned just now, you know, things didn't work out because of a traveling permit and stuff like that. And it is really amazing how the Lord made this happen uh, during this crisis. So um, sometimes crisis, you know, will, will bring out good things, right? So, and um, yeah. really thankful for this opportunity. All right, let us see how is the audience doing right let me see um okay if you are there with us you know as you can see myself and sherry we are really high in energy so if you are uh, you want we need you to reciprocate the energy uh so that we are as, as excited as uh you uh, uh we are as well so um continue to type in you know let us know that you are following us and with us and uh and if you want more you want more from Sherry, just type the symbol plus, 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 you know, then we know that you want more. <laughs> They're not sure yet because they really haven't heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're here, you can say you're here. You know, I know Eliza, you're here. Jolene, you're here. And many of our, our church members are here as well, oh, right? Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, um, wait, let me see. Right, so... Um, let us not waste any more time as we have only have one hour, uh, one precious hour with Sherry. So let us jump right into our topic today, um, Authentically You, Connecting Faith and Fashion. Um, oh, Sherry, a very common experience, um, um, I'm sure in the uh, US as well, you know, it's, it's glo global uh, uh, experience, um, especially among women in the world today, the difficulty of connecting faith with fashion and image. Uh, very often we tend to keep them separated um, and we fail to recognize or see how these two aspects of our life can come together. So when someone of faith focuses on fashion uh, and image, they are often perceived as worldly. Have you heard about that? You know, that, you know, uh, yeah, you're so worldly, you know, yeah, or unspiritual or, or vain. Um, I, I remember when I first started my Im uh, image uh, consulting uh, business, I actually struggled for two years, Sherry, because um, wow. I, I love this. You know, I am, I am gifted in, in, um, uh, in fashion. I'm, I'm gifted in styling. Uh, and shopping, you know, and but when I when I um, started my business, I often I often hear from people, especially uh, fellow Christians, that oh, Liz, it's it's so worldly. It's a very worldly industry. So I I, I really struggle with that. And um, but I thank the Lord. He really opened my eyes to see uh, deeper things. Uh, you know, uh, deeper meaning about image. So. Um, so in this sense, you know, when I first know or, or heard about uh, fashion meets faith, I was elated because finally I see someone is connecting the dots. Mm. That's why immediately I, 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 uh, I contacted you and say, you know, let's plan something because I'm sure that I'm not the only one struggling. So Sherry, maybe can you enlighten us a little bit about this interesting name of your business, fashion meets faith and how it came about? Absolutely. And if you hear a cat in the background, I apologize because this thing is 15 years old, almost 15, and she will not leave me alone. So it cries horribly sometimes. So I apologize ahead of time. She's just at this point has to be babied. So, oh my word. And as you can see, I have cats that match my coloring. So... <laughs> All right. Well, let me take you back. I um, have always loved fashion. 
And I was the only girl in my second grade class photo with a matching purse and dress. And mm -hmm didn't even realize that until years later when I was going through some school photos and found it. And I thought, okay, so this has always been part of me. This is just how I have been made. But I was not a Christian. I did not come to know the Lord in a personal way until I was in my late 20s. And by then, I had a degree in fashion merchandising because I knew I wanted to be in the fashion industry. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I thought I would be a buyer, but I wasn't very good at math. So that didn't really work out very well. <laughs> but I was great at cosmetics and things together. And so I had gone, I, I got my, um, my schooling, my, my fashion merchandising degree in Miami, Florida. I grew up in a small town in Ohio and moved to Miami. And so big city filled with, with women from Latin, um, from South America and just loved the way they dressed. And so I would study them and I would just watch how they put themselves together, probably much like your culture. Women just put themselves together very well. So, so fashion was just really, it's really out there and really a thing. And so it was about at that time in my 20s and, and at this time I was I was managing a cosmetic department for a store and I I would watch these women come in and it was about this time that I was invited to a Bible study and ended up coming to know the Lord. And so everything my perspective started changing because I started thinking okay how can I put these two together because there were women in the church who would say how can you think about outer beauty? That's so frivolous and that's so, and honestly, I have to tell you that I almost didn't want to even go to that Bible study because in my head, the way that I saw Christian women was dowdy and unfashionable. And that those are the people that, that I knew and I thought, oh, I don't, I don't really want to, I'm not sure, you know, I mean, how, how, and I almost didn't go to a Bible study because of that. So that's, that's bad on my part, but that's just how I thought. Well, fast forward, life happens. I end up moving to North Carolina, but before I did, I, I opened up an image consulting firm in Miami and started dressing female executives. And that's when you remember color me beautiful when that came out and we were all doing colors and all of that. And it was just fascinating to me. And I would watch these women from South America and really came up with this formula based on how they dressed. And then I would dress uh, my, my, my niche market was uh, female attorneys. And so those are the women that I, that I dressed. And so life was good and life was, you know, I, I found this, this niche, but it was really with in corporate America. So I hadn't connected the whole faith aspect yet until I moved to North Carolina. And I remember sitting in my chair one day, reading my Bible and journaling. And I heard the Lord say, not audibly, but the way he speaks to me, I know what his voice. And he said, I want you to take this message to the church. And I was like, whoa, where did that come from? Because it was just like, whoa, it was just so clear. And I said, I, I can't like, no, and because they'll stone me. You know, I mean, I really thought I was going to be like thrown out. And I thought, how can I take this message? I can, And I, the next thing I heard him say was, because my daughters don't know that they're beautiful. Mm. And it was just a light bulb moment. Now, I'm a little slow because I prayed about it for seven years. So don't do that. If God has given you something to do, whoever's watching this, don't pray about it for so long because we are called to be obedient. Take the next step, take the next step. And I, I just did it. And so for seven years, I prayed about it. I joined a cosmetic company, a, a uh, Mary Kay, I don't know if y'all familiar with Mary Kay, but I joined Mary Kay, earned three pink Cadillacs, was very good at that. And then it was just like a 
again, the Lord said, take this to the church. And so I resigned from Mary, Mary Kay, turned in my Cadillac and resigned. And, and I decided to, to take this to the church. And so that first, that first year I would, I spoke at one church and then somebody would be at that church and then they'd invite me to the next place and the next place. I spoke at over 50 mm -hmm. engagements, 50 churches that year. And the whole premise of my ministry is Peter 3, 3, 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4, which is do not merely count on external beauty. I think that's the uh, New American Standard Version. Do, your beauty should not merely come from external beauty. It doesn't say that your beauty shouldn't be external. It says it shouldn't merely come from that. So I believe because the Lord made us the way that we are, made us to love. Most women love fashion, not all, but most yeah. and love to get dressed up and love. That's not a mistake. He wouldn't just say, oh, you know, I want you to hide under, you know, a lampstand again, Matthew 514, which is, you know, you are. You are a city on a hill. Don't don't take your life. I love her. Actually, I've got the message version of that, which I'm going to find for you in a little bit. I'll, I'll read that. But but it's like, don't hide. You are like a city on a hill that should not be hidden. And so that's how my whole ministry came about. Right. I love I, I love it when you brought up first Peter three uh, verses three and four, because um. Um, it was one of my questions as well. Um, throughout my image consulting business and, you know, uh, um, coaching, I, I was often um, uh, faced with this uh, comment, especially from the Christian uh, mm -hmm. uh, brother and sister. Uh, they often bring this up, you know, I say, um, do not adorn yourself with uh, outwardly braiding your hair, you know, by wearing gold ornaments or fine clothing. Rather, let your adornment adornment the inner self. So uh, a lot of misunderstanding and misconception saying that um, uh, your outward appearance is not important. What is important is inner. Hence, we see, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether, you know, in America it's obvious, but especially in Malaysia and in Asia, uh, we see a lot of Christian sisters uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis. Uh, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but they put the only emphasis into inner beauty and not the outer beauty. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and I hope that today's session will be able to uh, open up your eyes and, you know, renew your mind to see something even more. Because um, I, I always believe when I look at the creation of God, um, our God is amazing you know, fashion stylist, you know, he's, he's, he's the best designer, the way he, he put colors together, the way he put uh, designs together. You look at the trees and the, the fishes in the sea. Um, it's just amazing. But the moment I turn my eyes and look at our fellow sisters in the church, it's like, uh, you know, something is wrong. Right. <laughs> you see? So um, um, I, I have um, prepared here a few questions that, you know, I, I will I will bring this up during this one hour session, and uh, Sherry hope to hear from you how we should look at beauty and faith together. Okay. All right. So my second question is that um, uh, in your years of helping women through conferences and you know uh, uh, coaching session, uh, what do you, what would you see as the most common struggles that women of faith have in relation to fashion and image? Honestly, it's that women don't feel good about themselves. They look in the mirror and this is across the board. I don't think it matters where you live, where you're from, age, height, weight, anything. It's when a woman looks in the mirror. It's just like what the Lord told me. My, my daughters don't think they're beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. They look in the mirror and we beat ourselves up. I don't like my hair. I don't like my nose. I don't like my hips. I don't like my thighs, whatever it is. And so we struggle with our image. And I think then that can be an excuse for Christians to just say that inner beauty is the most important, right? Inner beauty, or it's the only thing that's important. Inner beauty is the most important thing. 
Absolutely. It is the most important thing. But we have to help women realize that and reflect that on the outside. And so women struggle with their weight. Women struggle with um, not liking, you know, maybe they get up and their hair is all crazy one day. I mean, I'll tell you another thing, Elizabeth, is um, somebody who's going through my my training right now is is going through cancer. And she said, as a Christian, she thought she always had a handle on the whole outer beauty thing. She thought, I thought I had it. I thought I real, I knew my identity was rooted in Christ. She said, but when I lost my hair, I realized how much of my outer beauty is connected to the way I see myself. And so I, I believe that we have to help women really understand it. And my audience is women. So gentlemen, if you're on the call, I apologize. <laughs> if you're watching this, I mostly speak to women, but I know men struggle with this as well. You know, whether they're not, they're not muscular enough or not thin enough or whatever. But, um, you know, we, we have to look in the mirror at ourselves every morning. And if what we look, see in the mirror, we don't like, it affects how we act and how everything about our day. Mm. Um, Danny Chin, one of the audience, uh, so brightly put it, Esther's beauty in the Old Testament saved many lives. And it is so true. It is. Yeah. So yeah. really, you know, God used um, every aspect of our life uh, to, to fulfill his plan. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Danny. Really, was, really good comment. That, that yeah. was. That was yeah. awesome. Yes. Great yeah, job. she raised you know, uh, she raised it, all women are beautiful in their own way. Thank you, thank you. And Mabel, yes, men struggle with outer look as well. Yes, they do. <laughs> right. So um yeah, so um let's see. Okay, so when my next question would be Sherry, oh, when a woman of faith has the desire to dress up. Right. So before our session, we had uh, we had a, a backstage uh, conversation with uh, Sherry, myself, and you know some of my stylists, especially uh, Jessica. So we, we struggle with this uh, issue. Uh, we have we have the desire to look good, and we uh, undoubtedly in the morning we wake up extra early, you know, to 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 make up ourselves, to blow our hair, you know, everything is in place. Um, so in view of that. Does it uh, reflect a healthy relationship with this desire to look good? Does it reflect a healthy relationship with God? Or on the contrary, does it show that uh, we are worldly minded and less spiritual? Hmm. You know what? I think that answer could go either way. Because I think it's okay to get up and take care of ourselves and to really consider our outer appearance. But... Mm -hmm we must then go and spend time with the Lord and read the word and understand that true beauty is an inside job. And so if we're only focused on the outside, that's not healthy. I don't think it's purely healthy if we're only focused on the inside, because if we're now, if we're just staying at home and maybe we're, we're about at the end of our days and we're in our 90s and the Lord's about to take us home. You know, maybe then it might be OK to only work on the inner beauty. But you know what? Outer beauty happens with our eyes. It happens with our smiles. And there are women that, you know, that we've heard, you know, in the nursing homes at 90 and 100, and they're still fixing their hair because it's a desire that God put in us. So I think there has to be a happy medium. You can't go all one way or all the other way because there's there's going to be a disconnect somewhere right down mm. the middle. Mm. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And um, here we have Edmund who says, um, from the man's perspective, I like this, men should stop discouraging women when women spend time beautifying themselves. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, go. Thank you. <laughs> so we have we we really have men with us today. Yeah, uh, guy with us today who actually champion and encourage their their loved ones, their wife, their spouse uh, to really look good. Because I also feel that men take pride 
you know, especially when they take their wife out and they look gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So you know, if you are with us men, you know, share with us what you think, you know, do you, do you want your wife to look good or ah, doesn't matter, you know, ah, uh, whatever you look, as long as you love God, you know. Um, so what do you think, you know, guys? So please type it here so that we can know. Yeah, Danny Chin say, uh, may need to move away from the perception that taking off our facial as being feminine. Uh, what, what, well, let me see. From the perception that our facial as being feminine. Uh, what, what do you mean, that, Danny? You, maybe you can elaborate on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Help us understand a little bit more what, what you mean by that, okay? Yeah, so, um, Sherry, coming back to here, um, so, so far you have shared with us that, you know, uh, the desire to, our heart for God has to be balanced with, you know, our outer appearance as well. Um, so for those ladies who are, you know, uh, especially I know a lot of young people, a lot of millennium, uh, millennial are joining us today. Um, uh, and they, 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 they really want to look cool and look good, right? Um, so is there a danger uh, that fashion and image can hinder faith, and where is the line that we should be, be, be should should watch out for? Because uh, we also need to know that okay, we everything has to be balanced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that it goes back to when I didn't want to go to the Bible study, thinking that Christian women were frumpy. OK, and I thought, oh, gosh, if I become a Christian, am I going to have to dress that way? And I didn't want to relate to that. I think God has called each one of us to our own level of influence. And so there are if he has called you to women who need to know that you you wear trendy or clothes or you've got a tattoo or you've got, you know, he's going to call somebody to that area he can use you wherever you are and if he calls you know there are people who wear the long skirts and the long hair and they're not they don't wear a lot of makeup he's going to call them to their ministry he's not calling that person to this other person's ministry you see what i mean now can he use us in different ministries by all means absolutely because god is god and he can use us everywhere but he's so creative that what that he gives us this this amazing array of fashion and trends and if this person can reach that person better because they're dressed like that who are we to say we should all dress alike we shouldn't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you so coming back to uh just now uh danny right so i didn't really catch what you mean so all right. Yeah. So now I know what you mean. So you were mentioning about facial, right? So are you saying that, you know, men who are going to facial and, you know, are taking care of their face, uh, not necessarily means they are feminine. Yes, totally. We right. agree. Men should look good, Danny. Yeah. Right. So how, what do you have to say, Sherry, for, for uh, the, the gentlemen? You know, we have a lot of ladies here that is, you know, really pro with what we say. So um, especially guys, they have this uh, misconception that, you know, if they want to look good, you know, take care of the face, like Danny said, go for facial, then, you know, it's, it's, it's not so good. It's, uh, are they, you know, leaning towards fem femininity or, you know, even guys, I have a client who say, um, you know what, I often look being looked down because I, I take care of my nails. I go for a manicure. And in Malaysia, if, you know, your, your colleague got to know that you go for manicure for a man, they would really laugh at you. So um, from that aspect, what do, you, what do you have to share with us, uh, especially for the men? You know, I think it's such an individual decision and that God didn't make a mistake with you. He didn't make a mistake if he made you want to take care of your skin and take care of your nails. And that's not a mistake on his part. That's his master design. And you need to feel confident in the fact that you are God's creation and how you want to take care of yourself shouldn't have anything to do 
with the next person. The next person, if they want to work out till they're till they kill themselves and you know work out and get buff, that's their decision. And guess what? They're going to be relatable to a different group of people. You're going to be relatable to a different group of people. You know, so so I say that you know as long as we're taking care of ourselves men or women and not going extreme with it then you know i don't i don't think god has one bit of problem with that i mean he may tell me different when i get there but i don't think he has one bit of problem with that but and and danny that's a society thing you know in society if you were here in 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 the us men all the time get their nails done get their get facials all the time I mean, so here it would just be a normal thing. When I go get a pedicure, there's as many men there as there are women. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, I think it's, it's because of the, 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 the way we live in here, especially in Malaysia, uh, the culture we are being brought up. Um, uh, men are not encouraged to, to, you know, take care of themselves in a way that, you know, facial and all this, you know. Um, I, I don't. I don't think there's any um, uh, uh, wrong with going to manicure because basically manicure is about taking care of your nails. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing female you know, community about that. Is is if you have ingrown toenails, if you have ingrown, you know, fingernails, you need to have a professional do it for yeah. you. So um, I think we need a lot of greening of our mind to see yeah. certain things. Yeah. 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 All right. So yeah, please keep um, the question coming. Do you have any question for Sherry? Perhaps uh, in your own way, uh, uh, you are struggling with certain, yes, thank you, Danny. Thank you, love, a lot of love from Danny. <laughs> All right, so if you have any question, please type it in the chat so that, you know, uh, uh, we can get Sherry. It's not always we can have Sherry with us, you know. So yes, uh, Jesse, have a question for Sherry. Right. So um, Jesse is saying, I have a question for Sherry. How do we connect the identity in Christ with how we should dress up? One word. Yeah, Sherry. Okay. One word, Jesse. Beloved. Beloved. You are Christ's beloved. He calls you beloved. And when you dress, realize that you are his beloved. And then you take it with your own spin on it and you dress to your style and your uniqueness. Yeah. So thank you, Jesse. I hope that the answer helps you, uh, uh, you know, helps to answer your question. We have another one from, again, I think our gentleman today on our live show is more active than the ladies. So we have Brother Edmund. Um, he asked, Sherry, how can we overcome the pressure to conform to denying taking care of our image and fashion? First of all, I am so sorry for any of you who feel that you're not allowed to do that. And I think that is oppression. That's oppression from a society that's trying to make you conform to the way that they want you to be. It would just be like a, say, a, a group of Christians trying to make women not dress up, trying to conform. You have to be true to you. You have to understand, first of all, that your identity must be rooted in Christ first. And then everything else has to fade away. And if and and then you just grasp a hold of the fact that that it's important to take care of yourself and it's OK to take care of yourself. God made you in his image. He doesn't want you to not care about that. That's other people trying to get you to conform. So you have to just be strong enough and firm enough. And maybe it's taking your Bible and every single day reading scriptures about that, maybe doing a study on that and then realizing, you know what? I am who I am and I am going to not listen to the outer voices. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Sherry, because um, I, I, I struggle for many years. Uh, a little bit uh, sharing uh, testimony on, on my side is that um, um, 
I, I generally love to dress up, right? And uh, as you can see uh, if from our personality styling, I'm, I'm very much dramatic. Dramatic in my expression, dramatic in my work, uh, in my design, and even in, in my dressing. And um, I struggle for pretty much a lot of years because um, mm. in our culture, um, uh, being being too stands out, we call it, you know, wherever you go, you go to church, you, you go for a network work service, uh, networking uh, uh, events, you know, uh, or dinners, and you you too stands out. I often get this, you know, you too stands out. Um, mm. And I felt that um, for a period of time, I tried to um, water down who I am, you know. Mm. I, I look at fellow Christian sisters, and, oh, this is how you know, a uh, spiritual woman should look. And mm. I, I actually try to change myself. Mm. Um, but throughout that experience, throughout the incidents, I, I feel that I lost my identity. Mm. I lost who I am, you know, and, and I cannot be, be as, you know, as, as passionate in the things I do because somehow mm. I felt that it's just not me anymore. Mm. So in, in, your, in your experience, uh, you know, coaching and helping women, uh, have you come across this, you know, this kind of experience and how you help them? Yes. And here's what I would say to that is that recently you talked about being dramatic. And so there's yeah. you know, the whole clothing personality, you know, dramatic, romantic, you know, different, different ways. And I, I, in my system, we call it pure natural or classic modern creative original or style fashionista. And so what right. started to happen is that I noticed when I started, when I'm, I used to work always with one-on-one. -on -one. Now it's more of a broader audience that I work on. We have a large online community, a private style community. And recently I realized that sometimes women couldn't really attach to one of those style personalities because they didn't feel almost like they didn't know what to do with it. And as a Christian, it was like, I don't know if I should, if I shouldn't, if I really like those clothes, but should I wear those clothes? So mid last year, last fall, I came up with a, uh, a worksheet and your audience can actually download it free on my website. So they can go to fashionmeetsfaith.com and it's right on the homepage. And how, what I do is I encourage Christian men and women, and I don't know if any men have ever downloaded this before. So men go for it. We can, you can try it. But what I do is I have women come up with, and men come up with two adjectives as to how they want to be perceived and how they want to think of themselves. And then one noun. And then you put it together and you, and so for me, my style statement is dynamic, fashionable powerhouse. I had to own those words because at first I thought, oh, can I really pick powerhouse? Is that a word I can really pick? Won't people think poorly of me? And then I had to realize, wait a minute, but I am a powerhouse. That's what I want to be. And I want to dress like that. And God made me that way. But I also had to tie that in with realizing that I am worthy. God made me. In fact, I did a whole name search last year and asked the Lord to give me a name. And the name he gave me was worthy. And so I realized when I put those two together, the script, the, the what God says about me and what I want to be and put those together, it helps me in, in determining what clothes I'm going to wear. And, mm. and, and then you, you line everything up. So you, you test your clothing purchases against your style statement. And so I would encourage those of you who are watching, pick a style statement for yourself. Go and pick out how do you want to be perceived and try to step into that with your clothing. And, mm -hmm. and so in those, in, in, in a little example is I was working with a woman who was a, a ministry leader at her church. She was a pastor. She's a pastor's wife. She was a women's ministry leader. She was writing a book. And when I went into her closet, everything was black. 
everything was black and the clothing didn't fit. It was, she was buying clothes that didn't suit her body shape. She was a very tall woman and she was buying short jackets and the quality wasn't great. But her style statement that she called, that she named for herself because we did the exercise together was joyful Vogue pace setter. Okay. <laughs> joyful, she needed to be in brighter colors because we, when people see us for the first time, they are going to make decisions in their head, ideas about who you are. So based solely on what you're wearing. So we are a representative of Christ through our outer appearance first. Exactly. So when, I, when, I, when I saw she wanted to be joyful and she wanted people to perceive her as joyful, she needed to have some brighter clothes in her closet instead of getting on stage every single time in black. I also, she also said Vogue, which is a little trendier. She wanted to be stylish. So I needed to take her up a little bit in quality on her clothes and help her dress her body shape. And then Pace said her, she's a leader. And so uh, it'll be fun for you all to go in, you know, do that style statement and then own it. And so I tell people, own that style statement. Don't just put it on a shelf. Because if that's who really who you feel like you are, then dress like it, own it, and block out the naysayers. Because they have nothing on you and cannot judge you. God is our ultimate judge. That's it. And so as long as you are lined up to what he says and calls you to be, you are good to go. I totally agree because it happens to me as well when before I finally embrace who I am, uh, you know, uh, really classic, uh, dramatic, well, everything fell into place. You know, the, the things that I do, um, uh, the speaking engagement started to come in because people begin to, to see the authenticity that I, I have and, okay. you know, and I exude the kind of uh, message that, you know, I'm a leader and I'm an influencer and, only from from the moment I embrace who I am. So I totally agree with that. Now, Sherry, I have another question that, but I can't put it up here because it's on another Facebook page. Chiu Ming Wai asks, what is your take on plastic surgery purely for beauty purposes? Hmm, boy, thanks for asking me that one. <laughs> That's a toughie. That's a toughie. <laughs> right, thank you, Ming Wai. I hope and, you're still with us. Thank you. You know, I'm probably going to answer this not the way that you expect me to answer this. I honestly, I would, here's what I would do first. I would check, I would check your spirit and check and see what, how your relationship with Christ is. And I would ask him for the answer. I would sit and I would study the word and I would say, okay, so for example, if somebody has a really large nose and people stare all the time, it feels, they don't, they feel uncomfortable and it's, and maybe even it's, it's just, it's really affecting their life. If the Lord says, do it and you sit with him, then do it. Um, you know, I was in the fifth grade when my mother took me, I had plastic surgery in the fifth grade and had my ears put back because my ears stood out through my hair and I didn't make the decision. My, my mother made the decision, but I don't resent her at all for that because now I can wear my hair regular and it, because every school picture that you see, my, my, my ear stuck out through my hair. And so, you know, I think, I think you have to really understand the reason you're doing it. So if it is to get very large bosom, so you can be, have attention from the opposite sex, I would say, no, that's not the right reason to get plastic surgery. And so you really have to really sit and, and question, you know, what, what is, what would, what would the Lord say? And I think in some occasions he's going to say yes. And then in others, he's going to say mm, no. Yeah. 
And very yeah. often I feel that um, the lady themselves would have known whether it's uh, selfish purposes to 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 gain more more attention, you know. Um, you know in your heart. I'm sure you know yeah. in your heart, right? So oh, uh, Ming Wai, I hope I hope that this uh, answers to your question. Um, Sherry, I have another question here. Um, so I'm, I'm actually looking on another device. So Joyce Hui, uh, joining us, she asked, what would you tell your daughter who wants to dress like a disco girl? Uh, that's so oh, hard, isn't it, Joyce? Oh, VSCO. What, what is VSCO? Oh, so <laughs> VSCO. What is that? Probably disco. My, my it's, she probably meant disco. Right, yeah. yeah. She probably meant that. You know what, Joyce? I think that it's very difficult, but I think it starts. It may, she may be past the age where you can do anything at this point, because I think it starts from a, a really young age where we put these little short skirts on our little girls and we think they're so cute, you know, and then, and then they become five and then they become 10 and they still want to wear the super cute shirt, the short skirts. And then we're like, no. So I think we as parents are giving off um, kind of conflicting information to our kids. But when you get to a certain age, here's what's happening, Joyce. You can, I would, oh, that's a toughie. I would, I would explain how I would like her to dress. And I would say the reason, and I would really try to hopefully put her, you know, if you're in church and she's in youth group and, you know, really trying to, to understand that way. But um, what happens is our kids, kids get to a certain age and we may have them dressed a certain way at home, but guess what? They have those disco clothes in their purse and they leave the house and they change at the mall and they put them on. And so I think for our teenagers, yeah. we have to consistently talk about the heart more than we talk about their clothes. And if they can understand that your heart and their heart is what's important and not bash and bash and bash on the clothes because they're going to change somewhere. So I would say your job is really to help them see the heart of Jesus through the heart of you and just do it and just have nice conversations about it and, and just release it. Yeah. I think in line with uh, uh, Joyce's question, we have uh, Shi Wei who asked, um, because in, in, in some of the analysis, especially in the styling analysis, we have the alluring style, you know, the, the seven universal style. So uh, Shi Wei is coming from, from that, that approach. Uh, she asked if, she is the alluring style. Um, how should I dress in an image of God? You know, uh, is does it look? Uh, I mean, from 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 her understanding, I, I think she is trying to say um, the alluring style is a little bit uh, flashy uh, and um, sexy and glamorous. So, from this aspect, uh, does it is it improper to embrace her style? So. Let me ask you, well, Sherry, you have all the difficult question. I'm glad, I'm so glad you're here. So, Elizabeth, let me ask you, is the alluring style a style that's in your system? <laughs> we're kind of, I think we're we're I think our Internet is doing a little. Uh, weird. Yeah, because uh, we, we go by the uh, seven universal style by Alice Alice Parson. So it's, it's one of the um, uh, personalities. Is the alluring style. Yeah. I think I would be careful with it, honestly. I think that. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Kat, can you hear me now? Are we, are you able to hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I would be very careful with it. And honestly, as Christians, maybe we yeah. throw that one out. Maybe we don't use that in our style system because alluring means a certain thing, right? Alluring means alluring, drawing others to us to be sexy. And so I don't know, I might, I might take that out of the system if I were, if that were part of it. Because of the description is yeah. not neutral. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. So any more questions? Wow, time is really running fast. So it's 8.48. Wow. I'm, you know, when you enjoy yourself, time passed very fast. I know. Yeah. yeah. So um, I want to ask the audience here, are you enjoying yourself? If you are, can I see some response? All right. Um, you can type uh, the symbol at or you can type the symbol plus so that we know that you want more. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? Yeah. So, um, so great. Um, so once again, I, I'm really, you know, within this short uh, one hour session, I have, even as an image consultant myself uh, for mm -hmm. the past uh, six years, I have learned so much from Sherry. Yeah. Oh. Uh, from your Sherry. Yeah. Because um, you know, I, I begin to see that really our image needs to, uh, how, how we carry ourselves through the way we dress, through the way we behave, has to honor God. Yeah, has to honor God and, you know, uh, and uh, bring, basically is a pleasing sacrifice to Him. Okay, so, um, yeah. And you know, even even in the way, like some of the uh, style uh, system, need to really relook into it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, let me see any more question from the audience because yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mabel. Mabel said thank you for organizing this. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Agnes, yes, hi Agnes, thank you. Yeah, and look at Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, more, 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 more. All right. <laughs> so um tell uh, Sherry, tell 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 me and as well as the audience here today, um uh what's in your YouTube channel? What can they, you know, what can they learn from your YouTube channel? Because I can see so many videos there. Yes, okay, so the YouTube channel that you would want to go look at is called Style Tips with Sherry. And so maybe they can put that on the screen. Style Tips with Sherry. Yay! Look at that. Oh, that's fabulous. Yay. I prepared the homework. That's amazing. Yes, 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 yes. And mm -hmm. every Saturday, I come out with a new video and um, just really help you with, you know, kind of short little tips that help you with your outer appearance so yeah so that's mm -hmm. that's that's that all right let me okay i'm let me take this out <laughs> i'm a bit slow okay let me see let me see <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not a good uh, multitasker I, I i i can look at the 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 overlays and the logos and the commands and you know i cannot yeah so yes I would strongly env uh, encourage all of you to uh, subscribe to uh, oh, Sherry's you. YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know, Sherry is amazing. I, I, I think, you know, I, I, it's not that I think. I believe that this is really God's uh, transformation in our hearts because mm -hmm. I have a friend who texted me when I was um, uh, promoting our event tonight in Facebook, and she personally uh, texted me uh, uh, on WhatsApp and said. Um, uh, you know, she, she she can't understand or comprehend um, me inviting another fellow image consultant and promoting her online and say that you know, Liz, uh, wouldn't that affect your business? Wouldn't wouldn't you want people to 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 subscribe to your YouTube instead of Sherry? Because you know, um, from the business perspective, it just doesn't make sense. You know, and and I I answered her. I said, um, yeah, many things. We do really doesn't make sense because um, it's like what the Lord says, you know, when you when you come last, you will be exalted the first. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of uh, uh, irony in that, but so much truth. Uh, mm -hmm. So I answered my friend. I said, I have no problem in promoting another image consultant because, again, back to authenticity, um, Sherry can do certain things that, you know, that Elizabeth can do. And I'm sure that there are certain things that I can do that Sherry can't do. Um, so, yeah, there's no fear in uh, this competition because I truly hope, you know, if you feel that, if you see that Sherry can, can meet to your needs, please, by all means, subscribe mm -hmm. to her and see, you know, connect with her. And uh, if you can 
see that you know Elizabeth, you know, um, can coach you in certain things. Yeah, connect with me as well. So Sherry, <laughs> yeah. So once again, let me show this. Okay, please uh, subscribe to Style Tips with Sherry on YouTube, and also uh, she has. Let me see. Um, she has. <laughs> Her website is uh, www.sherrybrandle.com. Am I right? Not that one. No, fashionmeetsfaith.com. Oh, fashionmeetsfaith.com. All right. So it's fashionmeetsfaith.com and YouTube is uh, just log into Sher Sherry Brandle. Well, uh, style tips with Sherry. Yeah, probably Sherry Brandle. That's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but website, yeah. so, there, is, there is a Sherry Brandle website. That's my speaker site. But the um, if they're going to take the signature style test and download all that, that's on fashionmeetsfaith.com. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, let me just um, for the last time, let me check through. All right, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Agnes put it up there, the YouTube channel. No. Yes. So if you just want to click directly, bring you to uh, Sherry's uh, YouTube channel. You click at uh, Agnes this. Yep. Okay. And um, yeah, she may say women meant to uh, really lift one another up. Yeah. And, yeah. and not tear each other down. I think this is very important, especially uh, in the woman community. Yeah. Um, there's too much, there's too much of uh, bitterness. There's too much of jealousy and, you know, not yeah. wanting it to be more successful than, than themselves. Uh, and this is really not, not healthy. Yeah. It's not healthy. Uh, to me, Right. Yeah. Mm -mm. So to me, it, uh, you, I think in one of my recent Facebook uh, posts, I, I post up, you know, you, you will only be exalted when you humble yourself. Oh, that's so good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Right. so good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, Danny, thank you. I'm really, really, I, I need to get to know you more. I do not know you. Maybe we are Facebook uh, connect, but thank you for staying through with us this one hour of so-called female fashion. Yeah. And Danny said in the world of knowledge, there's no ownership. Amen. I see the both of you each other. High five, Sherry. High five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any last word for us, uh, Sherry? Oh, oh, I thought you you are you asking me or were you asking questions? What did you ask? Yeah, I, I'm asking you, Sherry, is there any last words or advice for, for the audience here tonight? Yes, I want to read this, just this one scripture. Um, and I want to read it. It's, it's, it is Matthew 5, 14, but it's from the message version. Okay, so here's what it says. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, it's just not only for ladies, but guys, we are meant to shine. We are. We are. We have already been elevated to this position where God has already put us on the top of the hill, and it is for us to shine. So it's truly a co-working with God. Yeah? yeah. So it's not everything that you know, Lord, you do, but the Lord have done His 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 role, putting us on top of the hill, and it is now for us to shine. So yeah. thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you for this verse. So yes. Um. Finally, I want to encourage uh, all of you to continue to log in uh, to Elizabeth Image Branding. So Dare, uh, Dare to Bear is actually an initiative where um, I would like to really um, stand for authenticity, stand to you know, um, promote um, being real in, in, on social media as well as online, offline, be, be real, be, be who we are, all right? We don't fake ourselves, you know, I don't like the word uh, fake it till you make it. Um, there's nothing to fake, uh, be real. So um, next week's session, we have uh, Miss Gosia Kano with us. Uh, she will talk and share with us fitness after 40. We know that, you know, uh, after 40, there's a lot of issue with our 
our physical health, you know, we are always lethargic, we are, we are exper experiencing uh, early menopausal symptoms and, you know, our joint aches, bone aches, and, and uh, we just can't find ourselves as active as you would want to be. So join us if you have any question. Uh, uh, Gosia is a, a, a owner of um, uh, Fierce Fitness and she's, she's um, also the uh, fitness instructor um, uh, and uh, personal trainer. Yeah, she, she stays in Malaysia. So she will share with us uh, more about being fit, being healthy, uh, even after 40. All right, so um, do tune in uh, next week, Monday, same, uh, not same time, because uh, some of our audience ask, uh, can we have it 8.30 and 9.30 after dinner? So yes, from next week onwards, it will be 8.30 to 9.30. Nice. Uh, don't miss this. And once again, Sherry, we want to say thank you for this session. All right. And um, really, we hope that uh, we can collaborate yeah we can work together in future you know? <laughs> We're do that. because um you know what what um the asian culture we we really need to hear more and you know um have someone because sometimes i'm also affected with this because i'm brought up in this in this yeah. place so uh, yeah. i i too struggle with it so it would be great really great to uh hear um you know someone that is not from this culture not brought up from this this yeah, uh, this area and and to hear a different perspective how we should behave how we should see beauty and 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 dressing and this you know uh, desire to look good so yeah sherry we will hear from you again uh, i hope we we'll hear from you again all right so, yes thank you everyone um thank you, thank you for being with us thank and uh, thank you so much so we will lock off here yeah all right so all right. Really, really thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, bye bye.